flip okay. correct <laughs> so good evening <coughs> everyone and this is our fourth she talks master class and it's on a beautiful topic the topic which our grandmothers always knew they knew the secret to rivet our attention in our childhoods do you know storytelling is the only way in which all our brain centers get ignited and that is why when a message is given in a storytelling way we remember it for a much longer time rather than just a straight forward telling you the message today we have sandeep kochar with us and he is a master storyteller possibly what the professional world today has understood is that if you want the executive the corporate world the message to go across it is through storytelling and sandeep very nicely educates all the corporate executives about storytelling he possibly has also heard these stories from his grandmother so let's discover what is it about storytelling and how should we go about storytelling whether it is in our short speech or whether we are talking to our friends or whether we are telling our boss whatever we want to so over to you anjali anjani please do introduce and tell us more about sandeep thank you good evening everyone and oh my god what a turnout everyone over here is just joining rather quickly we are at 50 and we are counting i'm pretty sure we are going to be a lot of us here trying to listen to this wonderful person some trivia for you 664000 3500 3.5 million those are a few numbers associated with sandeep storytelling he's got 664000 followers on linkedin he's written 3500 stories and he has 3.5 million views sandeep kochar the founder and ceo of blue minds is a fantastic storyteller and known for these wonderful uh, moments of storytelling if you go onto his linkedin page you'll find yourself engaged and wanting to answer to his quiz his polls or respond to his stories sandeep's favorite quote is logic has two parts one part until one part will fail you or always fail you the way i got to know sandeep is also a story by itself it was one of those days during covid when i was new to india new to delhi almost felt like that after you return after being away away from two decades and sandeep had started a conversation for the school our children happened to go to the same school i found it so engaging that i actually became a part of it and eventually developed a wonderful relationship with him and his wife no we're not best friends we're professionals who actually depend on each other i can call sandeep any time of the day and simply ask to brainstorm and i'll know i'll have an answer that's what sandeep is for you he loves to give back he loves to tell stories and he loves to run his companies presenting to you sandeep kochar how to tell stories on stage um i'll share maybe start with sharing a you know interesting thing that happened to me in this journey um i think it was in my first year of writing um, when i started to get invites for leadership talks and uh, you know uh, one of the pharmaceutical companies reached out to me from uh, chennai and uh, you know we spoke and they said we have you know some leaders coming in and why don't you come and talk i said fine you know so i kindly agreed they sent me tickets and uh you know and i just landed up there and i did not know what to expect so it was a very large uh, hotel there and so i thought it must be a conference room with 15 to 80 people and when i entered the conference room i saw around 250 leaders sitting in a room uh, so it was a little overwhelming uh, i had never given a talk with so many to so many people and so and when i went to the stage the stage was around 60 70 feet long stage so to walk from one to the other was also taking a long time and you know when i started to speak i just kind of froze uh, you know my my legs started to shiver and all of that started happening and i started becoming very conscious oh my god what's happening and you know these are very senior folks there so anyways i started off and i kind of went ahead and sh- shared my stories there uh, and then you know initially i was very conscious but by the mid of the session i realized that nobody was able to see that my legs were shivering so you know i think uh, sometimes you know we get very conscious about ourselves and i think that's where uh, maybe we lose the plot or we get 
we get under confident we are not able to deliver um, i think the key for public speaking and storytelling is very very simple and i'm going to share that simple secret with you all just in a bit let's see if i can share my screen and i'll share that and before that i'll have a you know a couple of questions for you so let's play some fill in the blanks from childhood uh, very simple i'm just going to go to full screen can you all see my screen yes sir okay. yes perfect okay so anybody wants to attempt and you can put it in the chat or unmute or uh, let's let's look at the first one the first image you see uh, what should be the fill in the blank for the first one or uh, you can give me all three if you want uh, but let's try the first 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 one i think that is very easy right brainstorming thinking okay thinking thinking feeling being oh okay okay uh, thinking thinking feeling okay feeling okay good so feeling being perfect loving thinking meditating okay good okay so i think thinking loving being okay perfect uh, so i think chilling <laughs> okay okay i think a lot of you have got it right so uh, in fact it's very easy for women to get this right so first one is thinking the second one is feeling uh, and the third one is a lot of people say meditating uh, being is really the right answer and here being uh, what does being mean to you all so you know whoever said being uh, if you can share what does being mean in the context of what we are speaking what does it mean yeah pile connect within okay good ashima good try being authentic yashita okay who being who you are authentic being your essence okay okay i still not got the right answer not doing simply being okay being is a state happy staying in the moment okay being versus doing accepting yourself who am i okay being in the moment okay i think two of you i think got it right it is being in the moment and that's what storytelling is all about if you can be in the moment you can become a good storyteller um and i think the other part of storytelling is also that you know what is the story you have inside you a lot of times when you go and maybe you are speaking on a stage or you are trying to share a story with somebody else uh, if you are not connected to that person or to yourself in that moment more often than not you will kind of miss the connection and that's what uh, you know the key to storytelling is let me try to do the next one there's another interesting one we have okay this is a little bit more difficult but we are going to try to apply what we've learned till now uh you got to choose the correct order okay between a b c d which one do you think will make you an amazing storyteller so think i think we've covered think and feel i've just introduced one more called writing i'm sure all of you know what writing is so now what should be the order in which so okay anju says a okay anjani you say in right and think okay a okay think we'll write okay a swati okay a b okay indrani has given a different answer good try indrani uh okay b shivani b b okay everybody is going b now okay good um okay a and b okay a and b is not the right answer interestingly <laughs> so anybody wants to try <laughs> okay deepa says d okay good so one of you has got it right right so e okay e okay there is no e actually here none of the above okay so actually let's go one by one uh, let's first look at a think feel and write if you do think feel and write in that order what will it make you uh, anyone wants to share if you think first then you feel and then you write what would happen see now uh, we've gone to the next level and now i see most of you are freezing now <laughs> uh, and that's really the key right how clearly you think doctor's prescription <laughs> okay you will think a lot okay absolutely i think sonia you got it really right uh, i think you are very very clear in what you are thinking uh, the moment you start with thinking first you will start thinking a lot and when you start thinking a lot that's pretty much the end of the story <laughs> there's no story there story is all about emotion right uh, and let's look at b now what would happen if you do b you feel first then you write and then you think what would that make you 
I do think and feel, then I don't write. <laughs> okay. Okay. Emotional. Yeah, absolutely, Sonia. You're getting it right. So it looks like you are uh, getting all the answers uh, quite right. Compassionate. Okay. No, so if, if you feel first, then you write and you think. Uh, you know, I don't know if if anybody has written a love letter to you. If you have received a love letter in your life, you will know that that person felt first, then was writing and then was thinking. You know, and that's what poetry is all about. You become a poet, basically. Um, now let's go at C, right? C is you think first, then you write and then you feel. Now this is a little different from A. Now in A, you first think and then you feel. Now, what happens when you think? Let me just clarify A for a bit. If you think first and then you feel, uh, actually it introduces something called confusion. Because thinking and feeling, if you mix them together, it's like having whiskey and gin together, right? It's going to just uh, uh, completely confuse you. So A is actually you get confused. It's a confused uh, storyteller or a writer. B is a poet. Now C, how would C be different now? That is when you're thinking first, then you write, and then you feel. Anyone? It's getting difficult now, looks like. <laughs> no emotions. Yeah, absolutely. Because feeling is coming in the end, Deepa. Very right. And, and when feelings come in the end, obviously emotions will be missing. Uh, so anyways, I think I showed you the answer. But let me just go to the answer. So this is what it is, right? <clears throat> if you see A is confused writer, B is a poet, C is a technical writer, and D is really a storyteller. Now, interesting thing, a lot of people don't understand, and I, I'm sure you all will say, how can you write without thinking or feeling? Right? Can anybody guess? How can you write, you know, without thinking or feeling? Yeah, so basically, when you are in the moment, that's when it happens. When you, you know, you just pick up a pen and you just start to write. And your pen starts to move before your mind or your heart moves. And that's what, uh, you know, a good storyteller is. A storyteller is somebody who can, who can be in the moment and experience the moment completely without even thinking or feeling. Now, this will come after months and months and months and years of practice. Um, in fact, there is there are several uh, ways to do it, but uh, for those who are very spiritually inclined, I don't know how many of you are, uh, you know, if you're spiritually inclined, this is what it is all about. Uh, and some of you may have heard of the flow state. Uh, this is also the flow state. Essentially here, what happens is that you don't, you're not, uh, you're not driven by anything and you're always in the moment. So this is how you kind of look at storytelling and uh, you know, be in the moment. So I thought I'll introduce you to this to you. Uh, any questions at this point? Um, yeah, so aut very right, uh, Indrani. Uh, it is also called automatic writing. Uh, automatic writing is basically when you can connect to souls who have passed away. Uh, it's a very, very simple, uh, you know, uh, process. But, um, you know, in fact, a friend of mine, she runs automatic writing workshops where she connects with souls who have passed away. And there are a lot of other realms also of this, which is angel numbers and so, so many other things. Um, there's also another interesting concept called lucid dreaming, which is basically, can you be, uh, you know, in a, even in the dream state, you can be in the moment and be aware that you're dreaming. So you can move between lucid dreaming. I'm sure some of you would have watched the matrix. Uh, lucid dreaming is when you can move from the dream state to the, you know, the, the awake state and back to the dream state at will. Uh, and this comes with a lot of practice, uh, but those who meditate for them, it will be much, much easier. Uh, automatic writing is basically, um, you know, whatever is your non-preferred hand, uh, you meditate and you kind of pick up your non-preferred hand and then you start to write. And essentially, it's channeling a soul, uh, channeling an angel, uh, it could be all of that. So I won't get into that aspect of it. I don't know how many of you uh, believe that. So I'm just going to stay with the, the material world right now for the time being with the living people around here. <laughs> Um, so that's how. Okay, somebody's asked how even poets may be in a flow state. Yes, uh, uh, poets can be in a flow state, but you know what happens is when emotions come, your feeling comes before other things, you'll be biased by your feelings. Uh, in fact, if you look at decision making for leaders, um, uh, I've been coaching a lot of uh, leaders and what I find is 
uh, that most of the time when we make wrong decisions, in fact, let me ask this question with all of you. Um, you know, if, when you make decisions from your heart or you make decisions from your head, um, you know, where do you make the maximum mistakes? Or when, where is it that decisions go really wrong? You can just put it in the chat. Head. Okay, I'm saying head. Okay. Heart. Okay. When the mind rules over the heart. Okay. Okay. For men, it's different. For women, it's very different. Uh, for men, most men make wrong decisions when they go with their heart. <laughs> so, so it's very sad to <laughs> share this with you all. But most men, because when they become emotional, I think, um, I think they are not connected with themselves in the moment. And that's when they make the worst decisions of their lives. Um, and for women, I think it may be a little different there. Uh, you know, and I think it will depend on... Uh, no, women to women, but uh, mostly, um, I think some of your put decisions have been best made from the heart. Uh, most of the time, if you make decisions from the head, uh, you know, specifically around careers and logical things and whatever basic stuff, it will work really well. Uh, a lot of times we see people get blocked because of emotions. And hence, you will see people making mistakes when they make decisions through emotions. But, you know, I think a lot of you may have, you know, maybe in some ways looked at it differently. There's a third way of decision making. What would that be? So there is, we've talked about the, the, the mind. We've talked about, uh, you know, okay, gut. Absolutely, Roshni. So that's really the intuition. Now, when you make a decision through intuition is when you are able to kind of, uh, you know, make all the right uh, decisions. Um, and intuition, I think this is a very long topic to kind of look at. But most of the time, intuition comes through awareness. You know, when you eat food, I mean, basically they say gut because uh, essentially that's the one which actually is in touch with uh, and can give you feelers of what's really happening inside you much more effectively because all those nervous systems are in touch with the, you know, the food that is being processed. So uh, really the gut is all about being aware again at the moment. Now, this may not be a feeling. This may not be reason. Uh, it may be something else. Uh, it is, for example, let's say you think of someone and that someone calls you, right? And I don't know how often it happens for you. It happens very frequently for me. Uh, so that's basically the gut where you're in touch with yourself. Now, level one is you being in touch with yourself. Level two is you being in touch with the world. So once you get in touch with yourself, then it becomes very easy to connect to other people. And that's how, so from the moment you first become connected with yourself and then you start connecting to other people. And that's how Reiki healing and so many other forms of healing and, uh, you know, uh, channeling and a lot of other things come in through, right? Okay. Um, okay. Veena is saying the head and heart speaking with each other and coming to a mutually <laughs> plan a solution. Okay. No, I think Veena, what happens is they are two very different things. Uh, so heart, heart is basically emotion, right? So heart and head will not. So, you know, our mind is basically a random generator of ideas. It has got nothing to do with us. It will uh, work on autopilot and sometimes, uh, you know, when you're living, you start disbelieving or misbelieving uh, that that uh, your mind is you. Actually, your mind has got no connection with you at all. You are the person living inside the body. The mind is just a random part of the body. So really, if you're having a thought that I can do this, I will do this, that just may not be you at all. And which is why most of us live in ignorance, right? In ignorance of life. Because we are never in touch with our own true selves. So for storytelling, really, you have to understand your story first, without which you cannot ever understand what's happening inside the other person. And how do you understand your story? I think one of the simplest ways to do that, can anybody guess what would be the simplest way to understand yourself better? What would that be? You can put it in the chat. Okay, know your story. Okay. <laughs> okay, how? Meditate, reflect, okay, by spending time with yourself. Okay, Swati, very good. Any simple thing, method you think we can do? Sit in silence, okay? Uh, you know, recently I sent a meditation uh, video. Uh, there's a very, uh, very good guy called, uh, I think his name is Michael Seeley or some guy. He, he has got some amazing meditation videos. Uh, but I sent this to a friend of mine and I asked him to meditate and he later the next day he he messaged me and said, I fell asleep. <laughs> so meditation can put uh, people asleep. So just write from emptiness. Excellent. I think you got it very right. I think that is, who's that? That is, I can't read the name here. 
Surekha, is that Surekha? Yeah, Surekha. Absolutely, journaling and writing is the simplest way to connecting to yourself because, and journaling and writing, if you use option D here, where eventually you're writing from uh, emptiness. Uh, absolutely, that's how you kind of get in touch. Now, see, for women, it's very, very easy. Uh, you know, it took me around 20 years to get here, but my guess is all of you already have it. So, you know, uh, for you, it will be just instantaneous. The moment you are born, all women have it. Uh, you just need to not lose it first. <laughs> and if you lose it, to get it back. So, uh, so I think if you can just be in touch with your feminine instincts, uh, it should not be very difficult for you all to kind of get to a state where you are able to connect with yourself truly. Uh, now, connecting with yourself truly does not mean connecting to the world first. You first connect with yourself and then you connect to the world, right? Um, and I think journaling is a very simple way. And the simple way to kind of do journaling would be, you know, just take a pen or paper, whatever you are comfortable with, and just write down your thoughts that come to you. Initially, maybe just the mind rambling. Uh, slowly, you may have some feelings coming through. Uh, eventually, what will happen, and if you can do this for seven days, so start on a Monday morning and end on the Monday morning. Seven days, write in a book all thoughts that come in and tag them as past, present, future. And also tag them, uh, you know, you can tag them around negative and positive thoughts. Most of the things that you will write, write will be all coming from the mind or from the heart. Now, if you are an emotional person, it may come from your heart more. And if you are a very logical person, it will come from the mind. And eventually, the mind will get emptied. Because when you read what you've written after seven days, you'll find that it's all the same. The same pattern keeps playing out. And once the pattern finishes off, then you know the, the mind just goes away. Now, now what is left is feelings. Even feelings, negativity, let's say somebody's hurt you, if you're putting them down, eventually you will get healed uh, or you'll break down, you know, either ways. Uh, but, you know, if you do it regularly, you'll get healed. After your mind and your heart let go and finish off the story, then it's the real true self that remains. That's how you can look at, uh, you know, how to kind of look at storytelling. Um, I'm going to share a few models of storytelling, which is more retrospective after writing uh, so many stories. Uh, I've created these models very retrospective. The first model is a very simple model. It's entice, engage, educate. Now, entice is basically, you know, the dress you wear, the smile you carry, your first greeting that you have with people. The hello on the phone, sometimes those hellos are very, you know, nice voices. Uh, all of that is really entice. Uh, entice could be the subject of an email. Entice could be the first line of your message. Uh, entice could also be your WhatsApp DP. All of that is entice. Um, and when you're kind of creating a story, entice is important because it's a hook to the story. It's the trailer of the story. And hopefully, like Bollywood movies, your trailer will be <laughs> will not be better than the true story. So that's the entice part. And once you've done the entice, then you move to edge, engage. So it's like, you know, once they boarded the bus and they say, I want to kind of go with you. Now you tell them the story and you start to really engage with them. Now, when you are engaging with people, there has to be a very interesting story and incident that you have. Now, you could also start with an enticing story also and then go on to a, let's say, a serious talk also. But I think it's always nice to intersperse your talk with a lot of stories. Uh, so you can maybe start with a story, you can end with a story and, you know, in between you can have a story here and there. Now, story could be an anecdote, it can be an incident, it can be any experience, it can be any of that. So once you've done the engaged part of it, you've kind of, that's where you do the relationship building. Because it's like, you know, the first time you meet somebody, you're very impressed. But the moment, for example, I'm sure you must be, my wife tells me this, that he was so good looking, but the moment he opened his mouth, <laughs> I just went away. So, uh, so you know, I think when you're kind of looking at stories, when you're creating them, just make sure that you're engaging with people very deeply and you're building a bond that is, uh, you know, that will just stay behind and that will stay forever even after you've, uh, you know, had that association. It's that, you know, sometimes people just pass by you and you, you kind of still experience the fragrance, right, of their... Uh, you know, perfumes uh, once they've even left. So that's really what what the whole bit is about, uh, you know, how well you are engaging with them. And once you've completed the entice and then the engage and then you jump to educate. Now, a lot of men will jump to educate straight away, <laughs> you know, which is why 
which is why you will see that they are not able to make real real impact and for women it's much easier uh, you know in terms of you can go through the same order so the order is very important it has to be entice first then engage then educate sales calls or sales folks or you know some people who are very logical they'll start with educate you know it's like the telecaller calling you i have a loan for you uh, that's educate where you're trying to sell something by the time you are very irritated you say i'm no i don't need it then the person says no i have a very good offer you know by the time the person is coming to entice you've already given up on that person uh, is the same way where you know in a uh, the relationship a man just proposes very early <laughs> <laughs> and that's where he or she he loses the plot there right uh, and now the educate part is where you really want to kind of uh, either give or take whatever is the transaction you want to have and the more you delay it i think the better it is right um, the best way would be that the person starts asking you for it and that is when you really kind of uh, you are able to uh, get exactly what you want from every relationship um so that's really the entice engage and educate uh, so my wife says this very interesting thing you've got to keep men insecure all the time uh, and that really helps you know so now that's also a strategy but here if you see somebody does that uh, really that's the entice keeping somebody insecure in a relationship is a great entice or a hook to have right where the person will always keep coming back to you because of that thing i'm not uh, saying that it's a good thing to do or not but basically i'm just giving an example of how you could look at it now the other uh, model that we have is a very simple model it's it's uh, it's a it's a cd model which is what how and why so you start you start with the what uh, now i know some of you have read simon sinek's stuff you'll say why not start with the why but really you need to have a script first for any storyteller if there is no script then it you know you basically don't have a story and a script will be very simply uh, you know it will be a, a kind of a plot that is there a starting and ending a setting what characters are there that's the what of the story once you've got the story laid out very clearly then you start thinking how do i deliver it that's the uh, you know the how which is intent versus impact okay let's look at the intent versus the impact bit for a bit um what do you think is more important let's say there are two leaders one leader has got you know so, you know very very good intent but very poor impact and there is another leader who has great impact but very poor intent uh, which leader do you think uh, is the one who's going to take all the you know who's going to become a great leader in the future so good intent bad impact you know a uh, good impact and bad intent or evil intent for that matter okay i think some of you have started typing let me see good intent impact stays okay uh interesting so it's a divided audience lot of seeing impact impactful leader okay perfect so you know i think uh here intent first <clears throat> so re really here uh, we are not going to an ethical dilemma here but for storytelling uh really intent has no room and that's a very sad thing but this is the reality of the matter uh, basically it means that if you are able to create a good impact it doesn't the in intent doesn't matter in storytelling it's all it's all going to be about impact it basically means are you making an impact on you know the people around you uh, as much or not so when you're telling a story if the story does really well great impact perfect whether the intent what it was how it was it really does not need to be even told also in fact you will find in storytelling you don't need to communicate intent uh, maruk actually intent doesn't need to be communicated <laughs> intent needs to be felt so it doesn't have to you know have any uh, communication required but in storytelling you don't need to communicate an intent in the educate part of your storytelling you can definitely talk about you know like fairy tales right any fairy tale you would have noticed has a lesson learned or something really that could be the intent of the story also but most of the time intent really doesn't matter in storytelling uh um, an important aspect of storytelling is also how do you communicate with this physical virtual and obviously your storytelling Uh, will change accordingly the last part is the why of the story as in why should i listen to your story uh so there has to be some very strong reason why you would want to listen to somebody else's story and there are only two reasons one is social proof that means everybody likes that storyteller or that story and the second one is uh, you know authenticity which basically means are you authentic enough because of which people will believe in your story 
Uh, and really, if you start believing in a story, really, again, intent, uh, intent really doesn't matter there again. Uh, so this is very important. Social proof basically means if four or five people are recommending somebody, you know, you start, uh, let's say somebody you know, tells you that, hey, this is a very good cream in the market. I'm sure a lot of you will start to kind of, uh, you know, buy it because your friends are buying it. They've gotten good results from it. So that's social proof. Uh, and authenticity is really about uh, how you come across. Are you a genuine person or not? Now, this is related to intent in some ways. Uh, it could be a pseudo for intent, but authenticity basically means are you believable? Right? Uh, is it that your story is uh, believable or not? Are people able to uh, understand it and if they feel there's some truth in it? So this is the other. Now, the last framework that we'll discuss, which is the freight, freight tax pyramid. Now, I've used this for storytelling. It's a very well-known you know, kind of a framework. But essentially, we try to use it for storytelling from a point of view, showing you how the story should go. So essentially, you kind of... So the entice that I told you about is exposition and inciting incident. You know, you basically interest the person by saying something, incite the person. Um, you know, um, and then you go to rising action, which basically is really the story. Uh, you go to the climax again, engage part of is happening. And once the engage finishes off, then you start to kind of go to resolution uh, of the story, which basically is the educate part of it. So entice, engage, educate. Engage is really you take the person up, uh, you know, it's a, like at the top of the roller coaster. And hopefully the, you know, climax is really good. So that's how you look at it. And that's how you build a story. Um, and, and I mean, storytelling is not a very easy skill to pick up because uh, we all have patterns of behaviors and you'll have to break those patterns before you can create new patterns and once you create new patterns then you could maybe learn how to uh, i mean either you will have the gift or you won't have it but it can be learned uh, through constant practice and also you know if you uh, you know spend some time on it so this is these are the three frameworks that generally you know kind of are required for storytelling very simple easy to uh, but i think the easiest one is the triple e framework that's the one you can start looking at from uh, you know if you want to start practicing uh, storytelling um, I'm going to move to a little bit around public speaking. Uh, I think the key on public speaking, uh, you know, many times, like what I used to experience is I would experience uh, times when I would go blank. And that was only because, you know, uh, if you have those fears in your head, then you will definitely go blank. Uh, you know, because uh, there is this amygdala hijack that the brain goes into where the brain freezes. And, you know, is not able to think or comprehend what is happening. And that's why, you know, a lot of people, for example, they forget answers in the exam and all of that because the brain just freezes. So, again, the key would be instead of going to the past or into the future, uh, can you be in the present moment? Uh, you know, for example, if you're feeling nervous, if you can maybe talk about that nervousness in front of a crowd, very tough to do. But if you do it once, you will break that fear completely. Uh, there are other fears also that come in, you know, maybe you may have fears of people judging you. Uh, you may also have fears of people laughing at you. Uh, I've had those fears and and most of the time I felt that it was more my insecurity than anything else which uh, got me into that. So if you're not a secure person, you will go through this and the best way is to just go ahead and do more of it. And hopefully eventually you will, will break it one day. Now there is another very interesting part or any very clear, very interesting uh, topic you must have heard of on social media and in books called fake it to make it. And a lot of people do this. Uh, now see, fake it to make it, it may work, it may not work and a lot of people use it. But eventually if the authenticity is not there, people will find out. Uh, so my suggestion would be that, you know, if you're not a, if you're very clever and cunning, then please fake it to make it. If you're a simple person like me, then it will be difficult to fake it and make it. At the same time, uh, you know, I think the key will always be, uh, can you try to just be in the moment and, you know, communicate with the audience, be comfortable and easy about yourself and be honest with whatever is going on with you. Uh, how you modulate your voice is also very important when you're speaking in a crowd. Um, I remember being part of a workshop where my co-facilitator was a, was a lady and as she was facilitating for the first time. And uh, so when we started, I handed over to her uh, and, you know, then she had to do an activity and she just couldn't 
muster the courage to and she had a, a pitch also uh, her her pitch was a little you know low pitch voice so she just couldn't <laughs> couldn't uh, you know speak a little loudly and she found it extremely tough so i think that's something you you'll have to look at when you are uh, doing a session you will have to look at uh, you know maybe practice a little bit in front of the mirror so that's a that's one thing that i used to do is practice in front of the mirror and figure out uh, how do you come across recording yourself uh, is also a great option to do both video and audio recording uh, i used to earlier audio record and see what happened my video recordings were really bad so i used to feel very upset so i wouldn't go through them but really if you can go through them and then see okay what are you doing with various parts of your body your hands um what expressions sometimes our expressions like i've noticed a lot of trainers and facilitators uh, make make frowns sometimes when they are facilitating uh, you know if you're not aware of it uh, it can be a big dampener because uh, any negative uh, you know uh, expression on your face can go uh, can distract the person who's listening to you from the core content very short can you mute yourself okay let me just mute Hold on. I'm going to mute all. Allow parts. So okay. Yeah. So I think uh, the the voice uh, is very important. Tone pitch and also break the monotony. You know, sometimes you may go really low and sometimes you go really high. So you know, try to break the monotony if possible. A uh, lot of pictures and cartoons and you know stuff like that help a lot. Where you can actually kind of build a connect. So that's very important. Uh, on the other side, which is the really the the brand part of it we're not going to cover too much on the brand part um, but i'm just going to maybe introduce this to you um, and i think the very beautiful framework that we should look at and what we have discussed so far can be summarized in this beautiful framework i'm sure you would have all uh, you know read this somewhere logos ethos and pathos uh, so logos basically is logic uh, ethos is emotion and pathos is really credibility uh, in many ways authenticity right now you need these three things to build your brand you know if you are trying to build your brand in front of people or on social media that's all what you need uh, logic emotion and credibility now credibility you will get by walking the talk you know doing what you do saying what you do and doing what you say um, emotion and logic obviously we have these faculties we just have to kind of work on them and and then you need to understand your audience so basically if you think your audience is highly logical uh um, then you may want to begin with logic to establish a connect and then move to uh, you know the uh, emotion part of it so i think very very important part of storytelling is really about the audience a lot of times we don't understand the audience and therefore we struggle um for me what i do is i try to you know let's say i'm doing a workshop or a talk i try to kind of have some connects with people even before the talk begins so that you've broken the ice some smiles if you can't speak to them um you know look at them and then in the audience you should find out a few people who you feel are listening to you and you can maybe have eye contact with them through the talk uh, sometimes if you feel that they are distracting you please start to look behind at a point which is like random just above their heads um you know if you if you if you think that you get distracted a lot uh lot of times you can also look at uh, you know maybe the background somewhere which doesn't distract you at all uh, interestingly uh, i had an uncle uh, who gave me a very interesting suggestion and he used to be a very good speaker and he told me when you go to speak just think they're all fools there listening to you <laughs> that's what he told me and it this works very well especially if you are a if you're not a very confident person because then you will get that fake confidence that is required uh, to move forward uh, if you are a very confident person already then i would not recommend you to kind of think that people don't know you but you know you should think that you know and you should have done your homework about the topic and therefore then you can talk about it much more uh, most of the time in public speaking questions are also another interesting thing that come up how do you deal with questions and how do you kind of keep your ego aside a lot of people get attached to questions so much Uh, and then that becomes a challenge um, so so therefore you know uh, i think it's important to kind of look at what now see what technique works for one may not work for the other so you'll have to figure out what how how do you understand yourself what works for you and then you apply some of these uh, ways and means of doing it 
Uh, for example, if you think you require a prompter, then you keep a prompter. If you think you require a lot of people, even keep a, a phone with them or written notes. Uh, you keep a book along with you. I mean, it just you just need to figure out whatever you are comfortable with. Now, when you're telling a story, I think the key there would always be that, uh, you know, where is the story integrated in your talk? And also, uh, do you think they will understand your story? A lot of times you will tell stories which they will not understand. Uh, so I think it's important to look, that, look at that. Uh, let me take a pause here and see if there's any questions. Did, we, did I, uh, Anjani, if, I, if you could help me, um, you know, if there's any questions that I missed. Uh, and maybe I... No, at the minute, no. sorry, Sandeep, at the minute, no questions missed. People have been intently listening to you. Okay, so, perfect. Uh, we would like to invite people to start typing in questions that they have and then Sandeep, you can continue. Perfect, perfect. So maybe I'll uh, I'll share a story with you and, uh, and then you tell me, uh, you know, how did you find it? So, uh, I'm going to share with you my original story, um, and then I'm go I'm going to share, in fact, a story which is a fable, and then go on to uh, how can I change and alter the story. You know, I'm going to kind of look at both aspects of it, so that if you are a storyteller, if you are a budding storyteller who wants to write good stories, you can look at both of them. So I'm sure some of you would have, um, you know, um, heard of Akbar and Birbal. So this is an Akbar and Birbal story. Um, so once what happened in Akbar Birbal court, uh, you know, the meeting started off, there was a court meeting happening, all the ministers came in, Monday morning, 9 a.m. meeting, and all the ministers came on time except for uh, Birbal, and Birbal was Akbar's favorite. Uh, he didn't come there, and obviously, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you all know that, uh, you must be knowing that uh, most of the ministers are very jealous of Birbal because he used to get some undue importance. So when he didn't come, obviously the ministers were, they started to, you know, whisper, where is Birbal, where is Birbal? And Akbar then asked, you know, where has he gone? So he was not around, they said, we don't know. After a couple of hours, maybe around 10, 11 o'clock, Birbal came into the meeting and Akbar asked him, what happened? You came late today, all okay? He said, yeah, actually I bought a new horse. So I was playing with the horse. So I just lost track of time. So Akbar said, okay, fine. and. Uh, Tuesday came by and Tuesday again, Tuesday morning meeting. <laughs> again, uh, Birbal is not there. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock comes in again at 11. Akbar again asks him. He says the same answer. And this went on for the rest of the week till Friday morning. Um, by Friday, the boss is always generally angry, right? So Friday morning and he comes in again late. And this time, uh, Akbar is very angry and fuming at him. And he said that, uh, looks like your horse is amazing. So, Birbal said, yeah, it's a brilliant horse and it's got so many things. And he started to describe the horse. So, Akbar said, if your horse is amazing, then make it fly. And if it doesn't fly, then I'm going to behead you. Uh, so, the moment he said this, uh, Birbal looked at him. Everybody was shocked in the, in the, uh, in the court. And uh, Birbal looked at him, thought for a bit and smiled. Sure, you know, my king. Uh, he can fly. The only thing is just give me six months. So Akbar said, sure, take six months. And he knew that obviously the, you know, the horse can't fly in six months. And uh, after the meeting finished off, all the ministers came to Birbal and said, you know, you're so foolish. What have you done? Now you'll get killed. <laughs> uh, so, so interestingly, Birbal looked at them and smiled and said, uh, well, in six months, Akbar can die. Birbal can die the horse can die or the horse can fly. This is a story that's a true fable. Now, I've given a spin to this uh, so that you'll get a flavor of how stories can be created. So I thought that what would happen after six months? Uh, you know, let's just see what happened. So fast forward six months, one of the jealous ministers reminded Akbar that, look, six months have passed, time to behead him. So Akbar called Birbal and said, why don't you get your horse and let's see it fly. So, so Birbal said, sure, my lord. And he went out and he came back and said, my king, the horse is ready to fly. Please come. So he guided uh, Akbar out of the palace and, you know, behind Akbar and they started to, and the palace was at the foot, foothills of a mountain. They started to climb the mountain and, you know, uh, the entire kingdom started following behind. So ministers and then, you know, the entire uh, all the citizens of the kingdom followed. 
at the top of the mountain was the horse a beautiful white horse uh, standing there and uh, akbar took akbar followed birbal and birbal said my, my lord the horse is ready to fly you into the valley and akbar looked at the horse looked at the valley and he said i think you were right your horse can fly so uh, so so this is the story that i kind of uh, created after that and uh, and that's how you could look at uh, stories differently uh, and create different stories uh, any questions at this point uh, that you may have and then we'll go to uh, i mean any thoughts or any questions that you may or anything that you want me to cover specifically i think rohini you are asking can you share tips around business data storytelling yeah so i think there are three three facets of data storytelling the first is the whole bit around the narrative uh, you know what's the narrative the second is the data and the third is visualization so data storytelling is really these three so basically you have some data and and then you have the uh, you know the, you have the uh, you know, narrative around the data uh, and you, and then you visualize so ideally what should happen is you have data you visualize it and show it in the form of whatever graphs or charts and then you write a story around it and that's what data storytelling is all about okay um any questions do you have a story bank yeah i do have a story bank um it has got around um, i'll share this with you it's a bot i have we have created a storytelling bot uh, it's uh, it's free for everybody to use i'll share let me just stop sharing and see if i can just pull that out for all of you Uh, you can use this so i've created a bot for anybody who's stuck anywhere in his life uh from you know uh, my experiences and this has helped uh, almost 75000 people use this bot now so i'll i'll share the the bot with all of you also you could use it whenever uh, you feel like and it will give you some interesting thoughts and stories so most of my storytelling is always in first person because i try to use my own examples of uh, life and wherever i have made mistakes and that really resonates very strongly with people but you could use stories like the one i just shared um, others also uh, but yeah i think that that would be much better that if you could think of a story which relates to what you have gone through um, that may uh, make more sense so i'm just going to paste the bot and maybe uh, maybe if you can share this uh, with the uh, with everybody also anjani uh, you know at some point yes, just maybe, maybe just email uh, email it to them as well perfect so uh, so so yeah uh, i think um, so there are other ways also so in terms of if you want to kind of have so you can create your own story bank uh, interestingly uh, i don't know how many of you are in hr but many years back i was giving a interview uh, and this was a behavioral event interview bei i don't know if you all know about it it's very hot it's a fad now but this was this was almost uh, i think uh, 2006 so it's around 17 years back and uh, so they gave me a framework and said look we are going to test you for competencies and uh, there is this behavioral event interview that will happen uh, you know and uh, so what i did was i looked at all the competencies and then i created stories around all the competencies so for every competency i had four five stories created uh, and when i went into the interview i had 30 40 stories all you know practiced written laid out uh the interview happened i had 3 4 rounds and it was my first leadership interview and i cracked it and all i did was that when they asked me a question on a competency i thought of the best story which i had and i narrated the story to them and that's pretty much how i cracked the best interview of my life so and this is called behavioral event interview these days and it's a uh, it's it's a fad nowadays but this was many years back so i had this book that i had created for all my interviews where i would have all my stories laid out there and uh, you know it used to work like one like a wonder because i didn't have to prepare anything uh, i just had to go through that book before going for an interview um so yeah so yeah in the yes bai through interviews um and i think uh, so storytelling can be used for sales uh, so uh, you know we kind of do a lot of work with how do you sell better using storytelling then the whole marketing piece you're all aware about how do you kind of create a brand using storytelling um in fact i teach at a couple of business schools uh, where i'm doing storytelling for finance storytelling for data uh, basically just trying to use storytelling in different contexts is what uh, what we have been doing uh, i think any other questions
There's a question by Surekha. It says, what is the model of Akbar Bibel's story, the climax at the end? Ah, okay, okay. I, okay. So I think the key was that, uh, you know, that when you are stuck in your life, right, the horse will, the horse can fly. And that's what, uh, what Birbal did is that he, um, he basically showed us that even in a dire situation where, I mean, have you ever seen a horse flying? But at the end of it, Upper said the horse can fly because obviously he was scared that he is going to, he has to go on the horse and die <laughs> into the valley. So, uh, so the moral of the story is the horse will fly. And uh, whenever you are stuck with any, any, uh, and this is the educate part of the story, um, which you should definitely say, and I didn't say it uh, purposefully, uh, so that you'll ask me this question. But uh, essentially, uh, you know, at any point of time where you are faced with any uh, difficult situation or circumstance, just tell yourself the horse will fly, and that's that's basically the story. That's the whole moral of the story. Um, okay, Nidhi saying I'm trained on conducting BIs. Uh, okay, I'm not one who has used storytelling. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, so I coach people, and that's what there I. So, uh, you know, what I do is I kind of help them make story banks. <laughs> so, and then I ask them to share the stories. Uh, interestingly, one of my coaches, he just went through a a few rounds with Amazon. A very senior guy, um, leader, was in the Middle East, and then. Uh, you know, he was giving this interview at Amazon and passed out from a very good uh, uh, top 10 B school in the world, uh, did extremely well. The interview went and, you know, they asked him to describe a situation where he has done something extraordinary. Uh, and uh, it was not exactly the same question, but on these lines where he had done something, you know, cross-culturally or whatever. And he gave the, he gave a story uh, and then you know, he they, he flunked the interview. So I asked him to kind of narrate that story. And when he narrated the story, I realized that the story was not impactful, which is why he lost. And, you know, he told me, he said, I did not think that I should be telling more than what happened. Uh, so I just told it verbatim. And sometimes what happens is storytelling can't be done verbatim. Uh, so there is a difference between narration and storytelling. A story is basically something that's very interesting. A narrative may not be interesting. A narrative is basically saying that, okay, there are 60 participants in this room, right? That's a narrative. But if I say there are 60 beautiful stories staring at me, uh, you know, that's really, uh, you know, a different way of looking at it, right? It's not a narrative, it's a story. So that's how you kind of try to create stories when you look at any story. Um, an interesting look thing way to kind of look at if you have the right story is what's the title of your story? And this is very difficult to do. If, for example, you were, you know, asked to make a title of a story, uh, more often than not, I found people struggle with putting a title to the story. So let's try this. <clears throat> let's try this. Let's assume all of you are stories. You've been on planet Earth for a long time. The story is unfolded. What would be the title of your story? And remember, the title should not be more than maybe six, seven words. So please don't write long stories on this. Just the title. What would be the title of your story? If you were a story on earth, what would be the title of your story? Girl in Uninterrupted. Okay. Okay. Title of your story. Yes, I am that. Okay. She ignited the spark. Okay. Nice. Alpa. The Untabua. Okay. Nice, a bohemian life. Now see the story, the title should be something that should make a person want to listen to your story. Right? That's very important. Uh, you know, so if the story title is not interesting, caterpillar to a butterfly, tongue twisted, okay, an earthbound misfit, reach out, ease and flow. Now a lot of these are narratives. They are not. Uh, so within the story also, they should be, the title should also be a story itself. Right. And what you're all saying is, so Nidhi, exactly, possibility, possibilities explored. This is a narrative. The global nomad, young and restless. Okay, fine. But, you know, does it really intrigue me to kind of listen to your story? May not be. Human being, work in progress. Narrative. Right. So these are not, these are not stories that are really, you know, eking out to me and saying that, hey, look, can I, 
or I'll maybe come back and say, hey, um, I want to know your story. And she conquered the world. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, Falguni, good. Okay. Um, she opened the door and, okay. So this could be a very good opening line, uh, Deepa. Right. Uh, it could be a very nice, interesting opening line. You could put it as a title also. Uh, now, question is whether I want to read the story or not. That's another the head in the cloud. Once upon a time, the girl. These are again all very, uh, you know, they're all narratives from claustrophobia to scuba diving. Okay. Nice. Okay. So you have tried to now show a journey. Now, this is a good attempt. Uh, only thing is, it's a little long, right? The word claustrophobia becomes a little long. Remember, titles have to be very short, simple, crisp, sweet, right? Follow the KISS principle from limitless limits to limitlessness. Again, it should be very, very simple, right? You know, that the lines I have kissed. Okay. That is a nice one, Anjini. Uh, <laughs> I would definitely want to know <laughs> what is the meaning of lions? <laughs> okay. Uh, that's what she did. Okay. Stories untold. Uh, okay. Okay. So I think, uh, um, I think you've got to make it interesting for the other person, right? And if it's not interesting, then nobody's going to read, read your story. The so first is the title of the story. The second important thing before you write, the, and this is all before you write the story. In fact, um, one thing that I do when I'm writing a story is I always first think, what's the title of my story? And if I cannot think of a title, I don't, uh, you know, I don't write the story then. Because it has to convey a clear, simple title, a message. Now, the second one that you have to write is, and, and you'll find this in reading comprehension, by the way. If you all have skipped reading comprehension in school, then please, uh, I'm in fact, I'm writing a book now on uh, on, on reading comprehension. Um, hopefully, it will come out and you can read it. But essentially, uh, uh, you know, in reading comprehension, one is the title of the story. And the second very important part of the story is uh, what is the central idea? You know, and the central idea has to, again, be very short, simple, and sweet. So what are you trying to convey? Uh, so, uh, let's look at this whole thing around, uh, I don't know how many of you have been following uh, what's happened with Dalai Lama recently. Uh, a, a, a video just went viral where he was interacting with this small kid and the kid came to the stage and or whatever to him and said, you know, I want to hug you and you know, while hugging, he started hugging and he started kissing and then he went a little, <laughs> a little beyond and said, suck me, <laughs> suck my tongue and he put his tongue out and all of that. Uh, now, now, see, uh, and very interestingly, if you see how social media has used it, they first, what they've done first is they've, they've done an edit to the clip. So they've edited it from the point where he just starts to, you know, uh, interact with the boy physically, just to show that he is doing something wrong. Right. And then, and then obviously people are calling him pedophile and all of that now. Uh, but basically that's what they've done now. And the title is very clear. The title is, you know, about <laughs> the Dalai Lama. <laughs> what has the, the indecent word that he's using or whatever. Uh, now, that's the title, right? So when you see that title and you see a picture on it, now, the story could also be a picture. And make, I call it picture stories. So the picture is basically enticing you now to look at that video. And then you basically get into that video, you watch it, and then you make a, you know, uh, an understanding about it that, okay, this is what is happening here. But so therefore, you know, the title will always be around uh, what has really happened. The, the really the headline will be the hook. The title is really the hook of that story. And then what are they trying to convey? They're trying to convey that, look, uh, he's a pedophile, right? He's not, uh, you know, what we make him out to be. Now, this is a great story in society when people become very, first of all, we make people famous and then we love to throw them down, right? Because it gives you a beautiful sense of, accomplishment that you are not as bad as the rest of the world you are, you have that power to throw the other person down and that's the insecurity which basically these uh, media folks play on and if you look at newspapers also all negative uh, titles and if you do sentiment analysis of newspapers you'll find in fact i stopped stopped i used to work for a newspaper company and i stopped reading newspapers uh, once i started working for the newspaper company because i realized that what's the game here the game is basically to kind of feed you with negativity and you keep getting hooked on to negativity. Uh, and therefore, you'll see all the titles be very negative. You will not find, um, you know, unless it's a rags to riches story, they'll put something, but, you know, those will be very rare. 
but you know you'll not find uh, you know very empowering titles uh, around um yeah sonia i think he's apologized to the kid you're right uh, but you know i think the key is not about his apologizing to the kid the key the key is the story the story about dalai lama uh, you know and what's happened and how has he behaving with the child that's really the story that has come out and the way it has been portrayed in a in a negative light now we don't know obviously is the chinese media promoting it you know that's also possible uh, but really uh, but i've seen lot of videos being made by lot of folks on social media about that you know uh, it, you know he is just playful <laughs> so you know <laughs> now now you could uh, you could title it as playful dalai lama with playful in quotes <laughs> right uh, you know and it could mean so many things right that title could uh, mean so many things Uh, so i think that's how you kind of uh, look at uh, yes absolutely they are clickbaits and uh, that's how uh, i don't know if it's making him extra famous uh, dr neeta i don't think so i think it has uh, really damaged his reputation and that's why he's offered an apology um and for leaders that's the biggest challenge because you know everybody is waiting for you to fall and uh, we are all human we are all falling all the time so <laughs> so so you know there's no way out right uh so yeah any questions at this point i don't know what's the time like how are we doing on time and then i forgot time sandeep um uh, there were a couple of questions that came in earlier i'm just looking for them give me a second yeah yeah so how can sales folks use storytelling technique to sell products and experience that was a question by sonia so basically when you are selling this is how i do when i'm selling so when i go to meet the client and and we run a consulting firm So what I do is I first do my homework on the client. I find out what's the biggest problem this client may have. I make a hypothesis. Uh, then I speak to some people in their organization who give me inside info about what the what is the biggest challenge in this company. And let's say there are three four challenges. I prepare myself and boil down to one challenge. But I'll definitely try keep two three backups also. and then i go there and i just share a story of how we solved a challenge similar to the challenge and that's pretty much it hit rate is roughly i would say if i tell three stories one of them clicks and that's pretty much it and and the and the the client then says that look let's just go for the solution you know i don't want to hear what you've done uh, i like this i want this and that's pretty much it and that's the way i do my sales and and i think that's the way sales should be done you just go and tell a couple of stories and uh, you should run your homework thorough homework uh, and over time your hypothesis should become better uh, you should understand the culture of the organization or the person to whom you're selling so i generally would watch some youtube videos and read up a little bit about the leader that i'm so i'm generally meeting up with with leaders so i'll read them read about about read up about them and then i'll just see okay what could be this biggest challenge of this person uh what is this uh what are the keywords this person uses so i will use a similar keywords uh interspersed in my oh, my pitch patshobina aditi ji i think somebody is speaking so maybe we just have to mute them all okay um <clears throat> okay anju is saying one of the best headlines i've read in a hindi newspaper was pair dawane wali na gala gala dawa diya yes absolutely uh but you know this will happen only in a hindi newspaper so <laughs> if you want you want read this in an english newspaper uh, it won't sound good <laughs> yeah it won't sound entertaining yeah. this is the question by yoshita it would yeah, be yoshita. you could uh, share more on storytelling for building personal brands which is all of which is what all of us need okay uh so actually this uh, see mostly i do generally i do a 6 hr uh, in fact it goes to around 8 hr workshop for storytelling so it's very difficult to cover all of this in one but uh, on the personal side see how i have done it i can share that with you so what i did is i started to write on linkedin so i first chose a platform i started with facebook uh, it didn't work uh, nobody cares to read about stories on facebook because they just too i mean they are not serious about it so what i did was i chose a very serious platform to tell very um, personal stories and that's what worked so it's like this uh you know for example let's say you want to now this happened with me i i lost my job before i became an entrepreneur uh, basically uh, uh you know i i got an assignment i started doing it and then i lost that assignment and they fired me and after that um, you know i became an entrepreneur but uh, uh 
I then started look for jobs and you know how it is, right? The job market is such that if you're a job seeker, you will never be able to find a job. That's the, the, the bottom line of the job market. So what I did is I devised a different method. Method was very simple. I'll, uh, I, I said, okay, let me just become an entrepreneur now and I'll go to people for work. Now, when you go to people for work as an entrepreneur, you'll again not get any work. <laughs> so what I did was I went to all folks who had posted job openings in their companies and I spoke to them and I converted that job into a freelance site. And that's how I began my journey. So there was no competition at all. Because they were looking for an employee and I would go there and transform and say, why do you have to waste so much money for an employee? You know, you have to just pay maybe one fourth of what you're paying and I'll give you much better quality than that. Why don't we try it out? So basically uh, when you are, uh, you know, so what I did was that's how I kind of started doing it. But in terms of content creation, the strategy was very simple. Choose a platform, try out your, your content on that platform and see how much it works. So I tried Facebook. It didn't work. Then I went to uh, to LinkedIn and uh, my timing was very right. I was lucky. Uh, 2017 is when I started writing, but that time there was, there were, there weren't many people who were writing on LinkedIn stories only. Uh, so therefore the stories went viral. The LinkedIn algo that time was that they wanted virality. Otherwise people will not come to that platform. So I was at the right time at the right place, chose that started writing content and that content went viral in a few months. Uh, I was hitting a few million views a month and that's how it started. And then I kind of continued that. So what I did is, so there is, there is the whole frequency and the quality. So choose a frequency. So you could start with once a week. Uh, I used to do once a day uh, and I continued that. So, so there is a frequency and then the quality has to be really good. So I would share personal stories about where I failed, what happened. So they were very, very, you know, first person stories, which are very authentic. And the moment you share that, there was, uh, again, no competition there. So you have to get into a zone of no competition. In life and in otherwise, get into a zone of no competition where nobody can compete with. And when and how can you get into that zone is, for example, if I'm telling stories and nobody's telling stories of those kinds on that platform, then basically there's no competition. Now, if you choose LinkedIn, it's, a, it's a not the right platform at all because essentially there's just too many people and the algo has changed now. So, uh, so the game's over on LinkedIn. Now you think of something different or you create some different content, right? So, um, I think they changed the algo, um, couple of years back, uh, in fact, one year back and just after COVID, because everybody started going online, they changed the algo, the virality went down and now there's not much. So basically video content does much better. For example, written content doesn't do very well. Uh, and then everybody's copy pasting. So there's not no originality there. Um, now you could choose anything that you would want to do. So for example, let's say you're passionate about, and you must have seen a lot of people doing different things. So for example, I remember there was a participant in my workshop, um, and he told me that, you know, I like to write, but I'm not good at English. So what should I do? And so I suggested to him that, why don't you start writing on Hindi on LinkedIn? And he did that and did extremely well. So I think, uh, there's, you've got to figure out what is that, uh, you know, sweet spot where there is no competition, it's very tough to find. But if you can find that, then it becomes very easy for you. Otherwise, obviously, you have to go the hard way and then you you have the frequency and then you have the quality. Now, quality is not going to be good from day one. You're going to improve over time. Generally, I feel if you write maybe 100 posts, uh, you know, you start to kind of learn a little bit. By 1,000 posts, you'll become a good writer. You know, uh, and if you're doing videos, if you do 100 videos, I think that would be a starting point. And most people will give up before 100. <laughs> so there's no competition really there, uh, actually speaking. So, uh, so yeah, I think, uh, in fact, if I look back, uh, I think I have created more content. I create more content every year than most companies create. So, you know, it's there's no competition, right? So if you are doing that much more, so you have to do it. I mean, you do, either you put an insane amount of hard work or you do something radically different, which nobody is doing. I mean, it could be as strange as you start singing songs and putting it on LinkedIn. I mean, I'm just giving you a random idea. Don't try it and then tell that Sandeep said this. But essentially, you pick up a, a, a random idea and you try it out and you experiment and see how it works. And then you see, are you getting traction or not? And then you track it. So I used to have a tracking sheet. I used to track everything. So when I started writing in 2017, I was tracking the top 100 writers on LinkedIn after one year and I knew exactly where I stood in that. Uh, you know, so then you need to kind of uh, so, but initially, I think the key will always be 
uh, are you creating the right kind of content which you really like and you enjoy uh, don't make this a i mean if you're starting it for as a routine that aaj to main likhungi i'll write one today then i'll write one tomorrow you know basically you will flag off eventually you got to do something that you really love to do uh, i i used to write as a kid and i always have been writing so i just loved writing right so for me it's like normal and then while writing i discovered that i was good at storytelling and i learned to become a storyteller so i think you got to also leave that room for can i discover something about myself uh, in fact i've got an acronym for brand it's bring a new dimension which basically means what is unique about you if you have something unique about you then you you can build a brand around it, right and then you go all the way uh, you know to kind of uh, you know hone that skill or whatever thought or belief whatever you have right so you could pick up any of those okay where do you get ideas for daily posting so yeah yoshita um, first of all good to e meet you again yoshita uh, so um, i think um, so i get up at 3 in the morning uh, and that's the best time i reflect on my last day what has happened in my last day um, mostly now i am in a very good zone where i don't have to think for i look for ideas Uh, i get them instantly so it's like my morning meditation so 3 to 5 i get my best ideas so um you can try it uh, getting up in the morning uh, so 5 am club is passe now it's 3 am club <laughs> so <laughs> the competition is really hot hot and tough now uh, so try the 3 am uh, sleep early get up early and you will have some beautiful ideas coming to you um i watch uh, i do read i try to read um you know now i stopped reading because i felt that i was getting uh, biased by what i was reading and I'm, i was not original uh, so i don't read much but i've now again started reading so i i pick up books which are very different uh, you know which are very radical and then i pick up ideas from there uh, and i coach a lot so i get a lot of stories so on a normal day i am doing roughly 10 10 to 15 sessions a day uh, so i get stories from there and um, interestingly a lot of my coaches are women and i'm thinking of maybe coming up with a book on women stories right it's a interesting thing to look at how and i find that the stories of women and men are so different uh, men are just seeing something else and women are seeing something else there's just no correlation at times so i i pick up stories of human beings around me people reach out um i remember when i started writing i had a young girl of 16 years of age who reached out to me on linkedin and said that uh she was being physically beaten up by her mother in in kolkata um and uh, mother used to beat her up with a stick in front of uh, her her brother um so you know i mean i used to get these kind of stuff and now i won't write such stories but uh, wherever i thought the story was like for example one 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 girl uh, she had written to me and said that her brother was actually abusing her and uh, when she went to her dad and mom and she complained uh, they did not uh, listen to her and they said no what rubbish are you talking about so i get access to such stories so i think i'm a little um, maybe i mean in that space where i'm able to get access to such stories now i don't share such stories but wherever i feel i can i do kind of maybe tweak them a little bit and i share uh, stories of people around me so i think we all have stories so would have have so many incidents in your life that have happened that have radically changed you or where you failed or where you did something so just look at think about those incidents put them pen them down and then slowly you'll get better at it as you write more and more uh, and you know once you get better it will come from uh, hopefully the story should come from the gut but you know mostly you can start with the mind and the heart first uh, and you know if you can connect with the story and read it so i also listen to music uh, music gives me a lot of uh, in led to emotions and those emotions then help me understand myself better so i think self understanding and self reflection is really the key to stories uh, and if you can uh, spend time with yourself you know go out go for a walk with yourself and look at world around you look at who you are what you are why you are i think that really will help you understand yourself better uh, and then i think childhood has got a lot of incidents and stories for all of us Uh, i'm sure you all have so just make a you know make a list of those stories um, and now i am able to see stories in everything even in even in you know for example i'm looking at the screen i can think of a story about it uh, but you know 
over time you will get better at it where you will start to understand that hey this is the way you can kind of create a story and then i would also encourage you to read story books fairy tales uh, in fact uh, in my storytelling workshop i start with a fairy tale you know because i think uh, fairy tales are so fascinating they connect you with an emotion and you just want to listen to that you know uh, and then i also think about my grandmother used to tell me stories so all those stories i would think of and and my mom or uh, you know people around me and then now as uh, as we become adults i also see that how people have evolved uh, you know people are changing so fast and how people are evolving i mean those are also amazing stories so there are stories of success that you can write about there are stories of failure that you can write about um you can uh, now i do a lot of uh, storytelling around you know my own insecurities or where am i failing in my life or um, you know what is it that i am unaware of my own self um, so you could write stories around that so very recently i wrote a post on i don't know if i can share that here um, is it ethical for you to share someone else's personal story so i generally take permission uh, dr sangeeta um if the person allows me and i then i actually share a draft with the person and then um, you know if the person says i am okay with it then i share it uh, otherwise i don't share it um so i think it's uh, you should definitely ask the person uh, interestingly one day i had shared one i mean this is many years back i didn't know about all of this but i had shared an anonymous story you know like for example anjini tells me her story and i you know write the story down and i put that out as i don't know roshni <laughs> that is a roshni story and then uh, you know i just wrote that story and i think the story went viral and then uh, anjini came to me and said what is this rubbish apne bhai did you share my story uh, so and that's when i learned the hard way uh, i wrote a story on tirupati balaji uh, i must share with you during covid lockdown when uh, i don't know if you are all aware uh, the tirupati temple actually shut down and they stopped paying the workers in the temple and i felt so bad about this thing that they were doing injustice to these people who did not i mean imagine these people who are cleaning the floors you not even giving them food to eat now uh, so i wrote this story and the story went viral and i received death threats and um, i also received somebody filed an fir against me uh, so you know there is also this whole aspect of it which and i learned my lesson so even after all of that i didn't put the story down the next day uh i went i thought let me go through the discomfort because growth comes only in discomfort and then somebody commented on that story saying that you are hurting sentiments of other people um it would be better that you don't post such stories on linkedin uh, so then i took the story down after two days because i thought that okay in the meantime the damage was done but i learned my lesson that uh, i'll never write on religion and politics so i don't write on religion and politics uh, so if you want to go viral please write on religion and politics at your own risk uh, you can go super viral and you'll get exactly what you want you'll be in, uh, you know you'll be in the papers but the risk is <laughs> for you to <laughs> to digest thank you so much sandeep uh, it's been an hour and 20 plus minutes and we've just been hooked to how you've been really sharing various dimensions of storytelling so this is this gold this is golden nuggets that you've given us um for everyone's uh, benefit sandeep and the, uh, is they run storytelling labs or story labs which are workshops i'm sharing the details here if you would like to take it further with them um and the link for registering uh, is over here can i just show one story that i wrote maybe i can do sure. that sure I'll just, i'll just see if i can cup one and uh, just give me a minute <laughs> while in the meantime any other questions uh, you have you can just uh, i think we have 5 minutes so we are going to okay let me just see if i can wait for you to share the story pull out the uh, actually there's so many written that it becomes difficult but you should definitely go to the bot that i've shared because that has a lot of uh, that has my best uh, 200 stories Uh, which have received over 200 million views so uh, in fact some of my stories uh, have received a lot um, and now i have started doing uh, i started a podcast also uh, you must listen to this podcast let me share this with you. you may you may find it interesting i've done with one with uh, there's a gentleman by name of dr marshall goldsmith uh, he is uh, pretty much the world's best coach now uh, 
uh, but I've done one uh, podcast with him. Uh, I'm going to share it with you and it's a very interesting one. Uh, okay, bot. Okay, let me just see if I can pull out the bot. Okay. Anjani, can you help me just pull out the bot from I somewhere? Do, I have it with me. I'll share it in the master group. So, not to worry. Yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah. I will share so it later. This is the link for the, uh, the, the uh, this, you know, I started something called Failure Stories. Um, I just did a few episodes with Dr. Marshall. Uh, hopefully, we'll be doing some more with some other folks as well. Um, let me just see if I can share some other story also. So essentially, now I'm trying to, I try to experiment with, uh, so I think really if you need to, you have, you're, it's like an artist, right? You have to experiment uh, and you don't need to be, uh, a lot of people when they start writing stories, they want feedback. Am I doing well? Uh, am I not doing well? Uh, you know, is this the right thing to do? Uh, am I? So I think uh, just do it for the love of writing or doing whatever you feel that, okay, is this, a, are you enjoying it? So really it's a journey that you need to enjoy. Uh, so if you start with the whole motive in mind that you want to build your personal brand and it has to be this and that, so um, may not be, okay, I will share something with you, which, which has come today. Uh, in fact, somebody shared this. Um, it's very interesting. Um, I, I find it a little difficult to share such stuff, but anyways, I'm going to try to be a little brave. Mm. So this person wrote the story on me today. <laughs> So I was the subject of the story for the first time. So it felt a little strange. Uh, sorry, just hold on. Okay. So I think somebody or people have already started. So my LinkedIn is a little crazy. Um, you know, you will find that messages will keep popping up. Um, so this person wrote this about me. and <laughs> He put a picture on me today. So I was the subject of the story. And the story went viral. So. <laughs> okay, my God. Anita, yes, if you guys can stop uh, if for a bit, not, uh, you know, sending messages right now, because I'll just, you know, I'll just get you to read this. So this is, I hope you guys have read it, right? So they put my picture here and this uh, story, this would have gotten, I mean, it's crazy. It's viral. So this is the kind of, uh, you know, stuff. And I'll just share with you, uh, you know, a little bit, a few others also, the ones that I have written. So I also write, uh, I also ghostwrite. So for founders and all, I do a lot of writing, ghostwriting where I'm just trying to kind of uh, write about them and all of that. I've also written on people as well. Uh, so some of them, uh, you know, some of them have gotten published on Forbes as well. So uh, let me just see post. So generally I put two, uh, two articles out every day. That's what I do now. Um, so, so today is, for example, I'll show you one very interesting one, which I wrote the other day, which did very well. Um, let me share that. Okay. With 60,000 views, I think every story is done well. I don't see any that hasn't. <laughs> uh, I mean, so there are some which do very, very well. So, so how long do you take to fall asleep? <laughs> right. So, so this is interesting, but I'll share with you one, which, uh, which we have. Um, so yeah, I keep, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that I post, uh, basically different kinds, um, you know, where, where people are stuck, what is happening. I write about, uh, even for example, I've written on cars as well. Um, you know, different kinds of stuff that, uh, that comes in. So, uh, now this one did very well, by the way. Um, this one is about how, why, when do you feel underconfident? Right. So, when I talk, I generally write in first person a bit, um, you know, uh, talking a little bit about myself also, uh, wherever I feel that, you know, I should be sharing about myself. So like that, I kind of try to create um, stuff and there are different kinds of, but there's one which had hit 10, I think uh, 10 million views. Let's see if I can pull that out. So I also, if I go somewhere, I post that, um, you know, I just... So, so, so I, the niche in all of this, sorry to interrupt, but the niche in all of this is what? Because, you know, often that's a question that I think is ringing in everyone's head and I'm just speaking for everyone. Often, uh, so see, my people, stories, my stories are radically, uh, you know, now I write generic stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, initially when I started, I used to only write core stories, but my core theme is always going to be learning and growth. If I read this uh, stuff that I'm reading, uh, can I can I get some learning out of it? So, for example, this this is a post I wrote on, um, you know, what do you enjoy more? Now, for example, if you look at this, uh, the twilight during sunset, 
Can anybody guess what it could signify? Let's see if you guys get it. If you get it, then I think uh, then it will be amazing. So, what does twilight? Uh, what do you? What is this one activity that we should be doing? Uh, you know, during twilight time, that is just you know the sunset time when uh, the sun is setting. So, this is the one that I wrote, and I don't know if you guys. So, I'll just share this with you. Uh, so, twilight is all about reflection. You know what you've done during the day, and this post. I mean, I just write some very simple stuff, really, not nothing, nothing so fancy. But these are all very simple stuff uh, which I write now. I do a lot of polls because polls do very well. Uh, therefore, you'll find most of my stuff being polls. But I do write some stories as well. Uh, now and then, I also comment on other people. Like this person wrote a very nice post. Rahul uh, wrote a very nice post on how he's <laughs> he's a daily wage earner. And I think all of you, if you are coaches or running your own businesses, you must be. So uh, I think you will have lots to kind of share. Um, you know, you can definitely look at that. I'll stop sharing and I think uh, time's up. So I can continue going on for hours. So, so I'll pass I, it I think I think for posterity of time and making sure that everyone can get to dinner if they have to, um, we are going to probably stop here. Nija has one final question. Yes. If in probably a minute you could answer that question, does the poll feature make a difference to the number of views a post guest gets? Sorry. In comparison yes, to yes, absolutely. Poll is the best right now, but I think they're changing the algorithm now again. So hopefully it'll be nothing in the future. <laughs> <laughs> but people like me have to find out. So we basically have to find out ways and means to uh, break the code. Um, so so keep watching my stuff and you'll figure out what is next. Awesome. Awesome. So on that note, I'm going to call this evening a win because I think we've just taken back. it. I, often I find myself making a lot of notes and then sharing that as a compilation at the end of the session. But today you were so good and so quick and so much that I really couldn't make any notes. So if anyone of you have made any, please do share them with us. Uh, however, the recording will be uploaded in about three weeks time. Um, and then you can uh, visit the recording again and you know watch it. Um, also on the 19th is the upcoming She Talks uh, where three wonderful women are going to present their She Talks and the platform that we are posting this at. So do remember to sign up. We'll be sharing the details shortly. Thank you so much, Sandeep, for being here. Uh, I think this was just, this was fantastic. We've got so much, so much to take on that I really need to filter it down. I've got six pages of notes um, and I'm going to really filter it down to see what I'm going to take back as top five. So thank, thank you. you so, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. I think so Anjali has put up a last question. I'll answer that. Uh, is it expected to write a summary? No, not really. Um, you know, you're not expected to write a summary and I think it's a waste of time. You don't need to educate there. <laughs> so, so sometimes you don't need to educate is one of those things. Thank you, Nita. And thank you, everybody. It was a pleasure. Hey, Rashmi, thank you. <laughs> Take care, everyone. And if you want,